and Business in Berlin on a Fulbright Scholarship, uh, which incidentally uh, is, uh, is in the category with Madeleine Albright, uh, who is also a Fulbright <laughs> Scholar. Uh, he spent a decade building and managing the world's largest Syrac community here in the Bay Area before founding Reveal Diagnostics. Marshall is now the owner and CEO of Reveal, which has dental imaging centers in San Francisco, Mountain View, Oakland, and this year in San Jose. He lectures nationwide on cone beam CT imaging, 3D implant planning, and practice management. And so far we've had a, a, a very high level of educated people, and uh, Marshall has added to that very nicely. So Marshall, thank you for being here, and uh, I'm going to give the podium to you. Thanks. I'll try to disappoint. Um, a real quick meandering, because I know Matt Albright was going to pop up. I, I dated somebody before my wife, and everybody else is inferior, obviously. And one day, well, I read the paper, Matt Albright's on the front page, flying all over the world. I said to the then girlfriend who was watching MTV, I said, hey, you ever heard of Matt Albright? And she says, no, is that someone at work? And I thought, you know, it's just not going to work. <laughs> she had other qualities, but it, it's just not going to work out. Um, and so we parted ways, and since then I said that was a Madeline Albright test. Kind of, you know, when I'm dating somebody, hey, ever heard, ever heard of Madeline Albright? So I met my wife Ashley, and I said, just kind of offhand, hey, you ever heard of Madeline Albright? And Ashley says, well, yes, we both went to Wellesley, and actually my wife did special event planning for big groups uh, like Google and others. And she said, in fact, Madeline's speaking in two weeks here in the Silicon Valley. I've recorded the whole thing. You want to meet her? <laughs> <laughs> and I just started crying and said, yes, please, because she's one of my heroes. And so in the back room before Madeline went on, she walks in, and there's a mayor and a couple other big, important people. And Madeline shakes a few hands, looks over, just sees me in the corner trying to, you know, do the, with this cheesy grin on my face. And she walks up, and she leans over and gives me a hug and says, you must be Marshall. I hope this proves Ashley knows who I am. <laughs> And uh, we invited her to our wedding, actually, and she wrote this really nice note saying she had some big world crisis to take care of, so we came in second. But, um, yeah, I'm a Mel Albright fan. And still married in spite of this picture. Um, so I, I will get to CT, I promise. But uh, we went to Yosemite recently, and it's my six-year-old daughter, Riley. And I got in a ton of trouble when my wife and I split up, and I took this picture. And I, I thought it was quite cute. Looks good. And from a different perspective, there were questions as how she got up there and uh, what she was doing and how far that dropped down. My wife's a lot more cautious and infinitely smarter than I am. But our, one of our early dates, 10 years ago, we actually went to Hapto. And you can climb Hapto into that. There's cables, you can go up there. It's, I mean, you can see this pretty easy. You just go right those cables. But when you see it from a different perspective, it's, it's a little more daunting when you get closer. And we went up there with my friends Ian and Paul. I'm on the left, Ian and Paul are on the right. Um, again, my then girlfriend, now wife, was really upset and we're just up on the top taking these pictures. And you, know, you think she's overly cautious, but when you have a different perspective on things, all of a sudden things change. So. Yeah, you'd say, wow, how much can you overreact to us just taking pictures, right? So, it's a 5,000 foot drop. Um, so, um, she's still with me, keeping me safe. But when you look at different things from different perspectives, it changes, and it changes how you see things. So, quickly about me, wife, kids, as Ray mentioned, um, Stanford and, and um, Berlin, and then I was in Sarah for 10 years now with Reveal, well, started Reveal, and I'm really happy to answer a ton of questions at the end. Uh, we can get into very specifically radiation, I'm happy to talk about that, happy to talk about why it affects people, how it affects people. The, the punchline is radiation is like a lottery ticket you don't want, and it's a, it's a lottery you don't want to win, but just like the lottery, it's, it's a question of what are your odds? And you just don't want to increase odds because bad things happen when you, when you actually do win. So happy to talk about that. More I want to talk about perspective. And I do, as you can tell, me and I have a focus problem. So this is to keep me focused. So first, I'll talk about the world, just kind of how the world is, the real world, the dental world. I'll talk 
a little bit more about perspective in CT, and then I call it push planning. Push planning is, before you push that button, you have to plan. Nobody approaches surgery without a plan, without giving it some thought. You actually shouldn't take an image without some thought. So it's a question of what do you need, you know, if you're taking an image or ordering, what are your expectations? And then what can you use CT for for the non-implant world? Because implants are the, the big obvious sweet spot of CT. Then where does CT apply to implants? And then we'll talk a little bit about guided surgery. Uh, and then I'll end with, with questions and everything else, just ask away. And so we'll start off with the world. I think most people in here, uh, like myself, I'm 41, except for you, you're younger, but most people in here grew up with these things. And the world was still spinning, the sun shone, babies were born, and everybody was happy. Yeah, I was happy when there were only four channels, and the remote control was my dad saying, go change the channel. I mean, that, it was a good world. I filled out my undergrad, my undergrad applications, I filled out a typewriter, you know, and kind of tried to get everything just right. If you wanted to take a movie, we had to actually get an 8mm, and if you wanted to find out, if you wanted to contact somebody, you actually found a payphone, or you went home and played your little answer machine. I mean, maybe some of you were the days before you had answer machines, and those were newfangled. I mean, it's, and of course, if you want to find your way somewhere, you got a map, and you find out which is the red road, which is the blue road, and you figured it out. And, that was, and everything was great. Everybody was happy. There was nothing wrong with that world. But the world's changed. And I, I think it changed for the better. I don't think anybody would go back. And so, just with that mindset, dentistry's changed, your world's changed. And so, keep that in mind as we go forward. More fun to talk about the real world. Um, I'm a fan of traveling. I've been, been to a lot of countries. I've never been to Greenland. And I look at Greenland, and I ask myself, is Greenland the size of the continental U.S.? It's pretty big. I'm surprised I haven't, you know, I've never thought a lot about Greenland. But is it the size of the U.S.? Give or take. Greenland, continental U.S. I don't know. Um, so I got a different map. This is a time zone map. And look at the same thing. Is Greenland the size of the continental U.S.? I'm just trying to eyeball it for a map. You know, plus or minus. And in looking at these two maps, what's going on here? Greenland just changed shape. And these are both accurate maps. They're both published. I mean, these are, these are legit. How did this happen? Th this itself should weird you out. But back to my question, is Greenland the size of the US? When you talk about world politics and everything else, you don't think Greenland, but it's, it's huge, right? It's, it's actually, uh, we're, we're four times bigger without Alaska. So how did that happen? And we just had two maps that showed it about the same size, even bigger. How did that happen? And, you know, you've, you figured this out. It's tough to take a round globe and present it as something flat. There are different ways to do it more accurately. In all of these pictures, Greenland is adequately or accurately shown to scale. And this is really how you should divide a map. Actually, the top left is not, because you're really stretching things out. And this is why in my big Greenland quest, why was I so incredibly wrong when you take something around and stretch it? Okay, well that's me looking for a vacation. Now for you, what do you deal with every day that's round but has to be stretched into something flat? And what are the consequences of that? When you take a pano, it distorts by up to 24%. Just like Greenland magically got bigger and it's not, when you're looking at that second molar implant and you say, oh, I've got 12 millimeters. If you're off by a quarter, you have nine. And what does that mean? What's, what, and what does that mean, 12 versus nine millimeters to your canal? Then think about that as you're planning, as you're getting ready. And you, you've taken a panic, take a look. Okay, let's take a PA. Let's get a little bit, a little bit more accurate. You're still up by 14%. So that 12 millis is now 10 and a half. Just like I was confused with Greenland, again, that's just me looking to backpack around and take a vacation. You're operating on people. You're planning the rest of their lives. 
it's, a, it's an issue. It's not your fault. It's just physics. You, it's really tough taking something round and making it into something flat, which is where CT applies. This is all back to perspective. It's not just me getting in trouble, putting my little girl on top of a big rock. It's also looking at a patient and trying to figure out how this applies in the world of 2D versus the 3D we actually live in. So that's the world, the real world. And, and to talk about perspective, I didn't mean to scare you. This is, this is scarier than when Chris talked about the cell phones. I actually took my cell phone out and put it away because it's not sending me to work. So back to perspective. Um, Really obvious where CT plays and where whatever, whatever aspect of dentistry you're in, this is something interesting. Upper first molars have three roots, right? But in most PAs, they have two. And I know that palatal root didn't just magically disappear. You just can't see it. X-rays don't penetrate really well more than a half millimeter into the bone. That's not very much. Now, that's with super clarity, you can get about five, six millis, so half a centimeter in, based on the cortical bone and based on what you see. But then you start really, really losing it. When, Ray talked, when uh, Chris talked about the brick, and you have to have 40% of the brick missing until you see it, this is real. I mean, you see it every day when you're trying to, when you're wondering where that power root is. So this is why, with perspective of CTs, you can take a look at a piano, and this, this is a piano stepping back through the arch. So right now, this is buckle, we're used to seeing. You can go mid-arch. You go back a little bit more, more lingual. And you see how that, that might change your treatment planning, your diagnosis. It might not. But isn't it great to know, to have that perspective? Whether it changes what you're going to do, it definitely gives you more information to go forward with. So now if you're looking at either post-extraction, implant planning, do you have a different perspective if you're looking at something not just buckly, but also axially from the top down? If you can take cross sections from the top of that bone from the ridge going down, does this change how you see things? And so CT is all about perspective. And it applies to different areas. Here's a nice case where you can, you can see a pair of lesion. When you look at the PA, it's a CT, but I, they we just blew it up. But if you could see that cortical bone from the lingual side, and you can see a fenestration large enough to put your finger in and tickle the roots, is that going to change your treatment plan? I mean, we look at endo, we look at extraction, we have some grafting involved. So, and, and where this applies to everybody is how often do you, for GPs, how often do you send the patients out? Okay, they've got pain, you isolate it, do vitality tests. Okay, you've, you're going to send, send you out to endo, send you to Ray, he's great. It's done, patient's still in pain, yeah, it's probably something, send you back for retreat. Let's go back again, yeah, there's probably a fracture we need to extract and do an implant now. And the patient says, well, I've already gone for two treatments, two crowns, I'm going to go... Now you're talking about extractions and implants. I've already lost a lot of time, a little bit of discomfort. Do I at least get that back or applied? And you said, no. Um, that's a tough, it's Don't tough. tie me into that situation. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Once, once, we, once we started with you playing cops with the handlebars, it was all downhill. 